hello again, everyone. So, uh, we're back again at the library. Uh, this time, I have another video in our little uh, Halloween horror series that we're doing. In my last video, I mentioned uh, three really important books that affected horror fiction and why horror fiction is still popular uh, to this day. Uh, but I wanted to mention another book that we have here in the library, uh, one that is actually instrumental in making sure that we got these books uh, here. Um, I take a lot of information from various uh, news websites, journals, and even just uh, reader feedback as to what should be here in the library. So one of my favorite uh, blogs I used to read uh, years ago that was actually suggested to me by two different friends of mine, both of them named uh, Casey. So if any of you Casey's are watching this, Hey guys, and when are we going to have our conversation about Dawn of the Dead? Seriously, you have my phone number. Anyway, so uh, one of those uh, blogs, like I mentioned, Too Much Horror Fiction by Will Erickson was one of the best blogs you could find online. It's still going. It's basically Erickson goes through uh, piles and piles of paperbacks, like the ones you'd find in a thrift shop or in a flea market, and he finds the weirdest uh, covers of them and does like little analyses of each book. So uh, one of my favorite uh, authors, Grady Hendrix, uh, who has written some fantastic uh, books over the past uh, couple of years, he also wrote a book with uh, Erickson uh, giving a lot of information, and that was Paperbacks from Hell. And this is entirely a, a history about all the weird, fun, uh, horror paperbacks that uh, littered store shelves in the 70s and 80s. There's some really fun, weird, funky stuff in here. Uh, I flipped through it and I saw like covers of books I barely remembered and I, re I didn't know what any of those books were about, but I knew their covers because I saw them in uh, spinner racks in like used bookstores and everything. Uh, I think when I was a kid, I knew some uh, family friends who actually had copies of these books just lying around in their living room, but yeah, this is a fun book, and it has a lot of illustrations and information about the history of horror from those uh, decades. But that's not the only thing I want to mention. Uh, Paperbacks from Hell, with the help of Grady Hendrix and Erickson, they actually started finding some of the more uh, notable books uh, mentioned in that one. And um, they republished them. They were considered lost for ages. And we have a good portion of them here in the library. And I'm going to mention a few of them uh, to you. Uh, the first one is Gregory A. Douglas's The Nest. Uh, this book is about a killer mutant cockroaches. And if you're a fan of animal attack uh, books like Jaws or any number of books about like grizzly bears killing people... Um, or, I don't know, pick an animal, and there's a good chance someone wrote a book about it, like, attacking a whole bunch of people. Uh, cockroaches really skis me out. So this book really, really was a chore to get through, but that's, uh, there's something to be said about uh, horror that is that uh, naturalistic. And I, uh, like I said, I highly recommend it for anybody who's looking for something really creepy or two. Um, this one I was actually really proud of because there was a uh, reader here in Richfield Park uh, who was looking for this book and couldn't find it anywhere because it's long out of print. And that's uh, Let's Go Play at the Adamses by Mendel W. Johnson. Uh, the interesting thing about this book was that this is the only book uh, Mendel Johnson ever wrote, allegedly. Um, he died two years after it was uh, published, and it went out of print very quickly after uh, it came out sometime in the 70s. Um, it received mixed reviews because there were some uh, reviewers like the New York Times and Kirkus that said that the book was really too shocking for anyone's goods, but then there were uh, some people who were like, this is a really uh, thorough, suspenseful novel. Um, it is definitely uh, one to pick up if you're looking for a book that is um, really uh, twisted and unexpected and you just don't know what's going to happen next. The basic premise is that a bunch of uh, kids have a babysitter over uh, one night, and then they um, decide to basically uh, kidnap her, and it just gets uh, crazier from there. So yeah, this is uh, definitely uh, an interesting uh, read. Next one is Barry Woods, or Barry, Barry, uh, The Tribe. The Tribe is um, a, from what I remember, I think it's a vampire novel, but it actually uses 
um, the Holocaust as a uh, backdrop, um, I find books like this really interesting because this is um, one of the things that gives horror a bit of an edge compared to other genres. Because um, on one hand, the horror that you see on the cover or that you read about might be just like a monster or so, and a lot of people dismiss it as simply a monster. But with books like this, you start to realize that the real horror isn't just the monster, but what the monster represents. Uh, this one is definitely uh, interesting, but yeah, be warned, it is uh, kind of a rough read. Um, yeah, definitely a lot of uh, rough books in this pile. But the last one is the one I'm uh, really interested in because this is a collection of short stories. And this is A Nest of Nightmares by Lisa Tuttle. Um, Tuttle is uh, a very interesting author. A Nest of Nightmares is a collection of horror stories uh, that are really strange but also really uh, oddly relatable to uh, certain people because um, all the horror in this is based on the lives of um, domestic suburban uh, people. So like uh, one of the stories is about uh, somebody who moves into a new house uh, after her aunt dies. Another one is about a, a couple that are on the verge of a divorce uh, and they want to know what to do with uh, their pet. Um, a lot of these, like these stories, if you just took the uh, basic premise of it, they would sound like any other um, domestic suburban fiction. But uh, Tuttle manages to make all of this really horrifying, and it almost seems like she's saying something about uh, suburbia in general. So that's the last book in this pile, but I'll show them again. All of these were republished thanks to uh, Paperbacks from Hell's uh, success, and also uh, through the hard work of Grady Hendrix and Will Erickson. Um, if you don't find uh, any of these books uh, interesting to you, definitely check out Paperbacks from Hell. Uh, you would find uh, these books in our standard uh, fiction section. A couple of these are still uh, new, so you'll see them in the new section, but Paperbacks from Hell is in the nonfiction. Uh, if you're looking for any of these books, uh, if any of them are interesting to you, or if you just have some questions, feel free to email us, uh, give us a call, or to request these books, go to bccls.org and uh, be sure to search through the catalog. Again, we're more than happy to answer questions. I'll put links down below here. Hopefully you could see me uh, pointing at something. Um, but yeah, in the meantime, I uh, hope you found something interesting. Well, see you at the library and happy reading.